the news just came out that schools will be open from September, which means that we are going to have classes uh, in person. And uh, the first three classes are crash courses, which are really, really important. So uh, level one students will learn how to build their game from zero, and uh, it's going to be great. Let's see how long we can do it in person. Whatever the situation, we will make it work. Game development is a lot of fun. It's interesting to see how we move the program of game development to using a stencil, which is a simple, to the software development platform to Unity, which is actually used by professional game developers. I took our students to this journey uh, fully this year, and, and it's incredible because we got all this game built with a lot of quality, not only in the coding, also in the creative uh, part of the tool. So it's, it's quite incredible, this journey. It, it's also interesting to see how we as, as LTS, I mean the coaches, have evolved during this, during this uh, crisis of COVID. Um, of course, we're a tech school, so we were, let's say, mentally prepared to do things digital. I mean, that's our whole goal. But it's not the same uh, thinking about it that having to do it one day or another 100%. So there was a huge challenge for, for the team. And at the same time, it was a relief because we, used, we could use our digital technology to reach other kids. So we have been building, um, during the first part of the confinement, this online game development, when we bring even people that we have never seen, and they have been successful building games. It was a fully online experience with about uh, 20 teams. Um, personally, I was coaching uh, six teams. It was a very good uh, exercise to do last year, as a preparation for uh, the uh, game development module uh, for LTS1 this year. So then we already knew a little bit better how to work efficiently online. It's hard to get people's attention online and also keeping people engaged. So as soon as you get the engagement and uh, the attention, you have to keep it and keep the momentum uh, running. You basically compete uh, with Netflix, YouTube and the rest of the internet to keep the students on your window rather than any other window or any other tab in the browser. I feel like at LTS it was really smooth. I, I felt like there is already a big um, remote culture that is in place and there were no difficulties to like communicate with people. Uh, everything works with Slack, we could talk, we could phone each other, everybody's home so it was quite easy. So actually I had a very good experience. If I had to give stars I would give Five stars. <laughs> Basically, we try to provide the best quality of service, but for teaching and coaching. Teaching online is, is very, very different. Um, you, you don't get really the feedback of the students. You're never sure if everybody gets it. Online coaching is like coaching, but in hard mode. Online teamwork compared to in-class teamwork was not very different because we're now used to uh, online teaching and using Microsoft Teams and stuff and we manage it pretty good I think. In person we would interact more, uh, online we would sort of come up with a game plan in the first say 15 minutes and then break apart and work on that. It's in person and you can talk to the other ones without raising a hand or something in Microsoft Teams and yeah I prefer the um, in person classes? I mean, of course, I think working in person is going to be a little more immediate, well, to say good, to get, to get answers, for example. Um, but I think the online teamwork was also very efficient and we made the best out of it. And uh, well, I, the division of labor was extremely efficient and very useful as well. All online is not the best. And uh, we, we try every time it was possible to have a physical class we have the physical class. But we also found the need that there is a social, social interaction is very important. We had to learn uh, quite a bit of uh, online communication, but I think towards the end, we were managing pretty well. And uh, at the beginning, it's true, we weren't uh, 
exactly telling each other a lot about things what we're doing we're not telling the coaches as well what we're doing but as we went on and now near the end of the our project we have been making a lot more calls we have been uh, doing a lot more communication showing each other a lot of other things like the progress we've done or things we've done so that's been better uh, i think it's um, not that easy as in person but uh, i think we managed to get through that situation and uh, overcome the every difficulty we had so yes. i don't think i preferred either one i think they both have their pros and cons i think that it's nice to be able to interact with team members you can bounce ideas off them uh, i think it's nice to be alone working sometimes because you can form your own ideas i mean it's like kind of different because like when you were online it was more helpful because they were all there so i could actually like you know we could like you know have like a whole conference and they were all there and paying attention and then online i feel like it's easier to get distracted and um you know you're not like all together and it's difficult to get everyone online and something's not working screen sharing you know microphone whatever it's like more of a hustle but i think in the end it it all worked fine and the coaches were always there and when you're in class you can ask your coaches directly and you don't have to wait for an answer. It's not that it takes a long time to for the coaches to answer. You guys are played really fast, so. But it's just more easy. Also, you can directly see what the, where the problem is instead of calling and then having to arrange something. I really prefer coaching in class because you you have that that first feeling with the people. You see the you see the kids and you can talk to them and they also get a feeling for who you are. Um, I'm happy I had the, the chance to uh, see the kids before we went online. If you have this challenge to have both in one year, you, you should just go on and, and, and uh, do the in presencial, uh, work with the kids interactively and give them more jobs to do in the homework actually, and being there for as a coach. Content is key to keep students uh, engaged. For this game dev module, we mobilized even more resources to create uh, video tutorials, live streams, and many other uh, learning resources uh, that you can just use online whenever you want. Um, I think the online content was helpful for the most part. Uh, I think that it helped us to get past blocks that we experienced. It was nice to have something to rely on in case you couldn't manage something. Um, like. The thing is, the, at first I thought that it was going to be really hard, but knowing that there were online content that, was, that would help me do it, I thought that that was, a, that was really good help and helpful. I used um, a live stream actually for like learning how to work with UI and stuff because I'd never done it before. And all the videos and links and everything were really helpful when I was like stuck or had issues or I wanted to add something to the game, it was actually really helpful. Like the content side on Teams and everything was actually really helpful. One of my favorite things about it is that it was accessible at no matter what time. So if you wanted to work on something and somebody wasn't available to help you or anything like that, you could just look it up and try to do something for yourself and try to make progress on that. Um, I found the online content quite useful um, and the, the live events also quite useful because I could refer to them when, whenever I had a problem and that was very nice. Um, and I also used YouTube a lot and also Brackies and, um, because I, was, I also participated in the Game Dev Challenge last year so I also had resources from that so I also used those. This is it. Today is a big day. After 12 weeks of online classes, in-person classes and live streams, we are finally here. There are 35 teams showcasing the game and competing for some pretty big prizes. There will be four prizes and also some surprises. Also, everybody that made it here today is a winner and can be really proud of what they have achieved. Let's see the result. As this event is about the game dev module, the theme of this video must also be like a game. So let's go ahead and finally know the results.
we're going to watch the pitches of the top 10, no, top 11 games. There are three big prizes for the top three teams chosen by the jury and there is a community award for the best game chosen by the students themselves. The games have been reviewed by a jury composed of five industry experts. You will discover them soon. And finally, of course, we have some surprises. So do not leave your seat until the very end. Let's move on. This year again, we have the honor to have professionals from different industries playing, watching, and trying all your game out. First, we have Fabio de Aguiar. He is the CEO and founder of 11F Luxembourg. Then we have Joseph Rodesch, who is science communicator at the Luxembourg National Research Fund, FNR. You might also know him as Mr. Science. Next up, we have Jeremy Flamang. He is a web developer at Reborn IT Services. He is also a founding member of the Games and Interactive Digital Media Association. And he is the founder of the monthly Game Creators Meetup. Then we have Weasley Deglise. He is a co-founder of Realab, founder of Eno, and a senior advisor at Lux Factory. Last but not least, we have Mathieu Braccetti. He is a CEO and founder of Virtual Rangers. The jury watched all your pitches, gameplay videos, and played all your games. It was difficult to choose a top 10, so we chose one more. At the end, teams that could demonstrate great teamwork and most of all, a great and complete game won the hearts of the jury. So if your game has not been featured today, don't be sad. You have to be proud because you pitched and created a game from zero. Game development is a lot of fun, but it's far from easy. And your game will be shared later on on our social media. All right, let's not wait anymore and see the games. On number 11, we have Styx, a 2D platformer about Greek mythology. Well done to Alondra Sophie, Noemi, Victoria and Alric. Let's hear the pitch. Have you ever heard of a fun, addictive and educational game completely based on Greek mythology? No? Well, be ready to be surprised then because today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about Styx, a game entirely based on a real Greek, my Greek myth called the kidnapping of Persephone. So as you, as you may, you may have noticed that our game takes place in the ancient Greece, right? So Hades, god of death, falls in love with Persephone and kidnaps her. Demeter, Persephone's mother, and also goddess of the harvest, rescues her in the death of the underworld. Your role as Demeter is to save Persephone by passing harsh obstacles, collecting mysterious letters and defeating two big bosses, including Hades himself. I wish you good luck with that. And this will be it for me. I'll give the word further to Noemi. So as Ulrich already mentioned, our, base is, uh, our game is based on Greek mythology. It's not only a platform game, but also it also includes two boss fights. It's fun, educational, exciting and very easy to play because you only have to use a few keys and the spacebar. Our game includes three levels. The first level is a platform running game level um, in which you have to collect letters which spell a word, um, the name of one of the main bosses you have to fight. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. The second and the last level are boss fights. Once you beat a level, you get teleported onto the next one, and once you beat the final level, you win the game. Um, Ulrich will now show you a bit of gameplay. So as you can see, we set up a little menu, and when you start, you immediately start running endlessly, and the only thing you have to do in the first part is to space on the jump on the space bar to only jump. So here's more about reflexes than yeah, reflexes and reflexes skill. That's it. So here you can see our different characters. In it each and every one was made by us and designed 
uh, also by ourselves, and they were inspired by the true story of the Greek mythology. And now I'm going to pass the award to Victoria. So we're the Cerberus team. Uh, we get our name from a monstrous watchdog um, of the underworld, and he has three heads, symbolizing the initial three members of our group, Alric, Noemi, and I. But um, then Alondra joined our team, but we still liked the name, so we kept it. So um, Alric and I were uh, focusing on the programming and coding, and Noemi and um, Alondra were more focused on the art and design. We had a few difficulties along the way. Um, Alondra and Noemi, they had to get used to a recommended um, illustrating app and they also had trouble drawing the anatomy of the human body for the different characters in our game. And Alric and I had to um, look up a lot of tutorials and tips for the programming and coding. So thank you for your attention and we hope to see you soon in the underworld. On number 10, we have The Traveler, a 2D platformer but with a twist, made by Mauro, Kai and Philip. Let's see the pitch. Hello, today we are here presenting The Traveler. We are the team PLAP. Um, our story starts with a traveler who wakes up and who has lost his memory. Um, he is trapped in an endless trial and he has to uh, over overcome the challenges and uh, his goal is to regain his memory. So basically our game is a 2D adventure game. Uh, it has features like a platformer and it's a jump and one like many games you know. The feature that we added is a point and click feature, so you have to jump and run and click with your mouse. Um, the question is why our game? Our game is very challenging. Um, we've uh, uh, added a never seen mechanic and we have our game has no age restriction and it's a good game for a speed run. Now we will show you a quick gameplay of our game. So as you can see, you see many features of a platformer and there are enemies that you have to substitute to overcome things uh, and, and ac get access to the level. So you can continue and finish the level as you go around. Um, the main character, well, I got inspired um, with, um, as I draw myself and uh, and got inspired in the internet, uh, yeah. Uh, the enemies, we have a, a orange apple that's uh, animated by rigging and uh, a violet uh, um, ghost that's animated uh, frame to frame. Um, I was um, responsible for the uh, designing idea. Um, my challenge was to make the game playable so it was not too easy and not too hard to play. And it was more difficult to, uh, to come up with ideas how to make a good level. I was responsible for the coding of the game. It's, uh gave me a lot of problems because not everything worked as it should at first time. So by processing, uh, by process of 200 hour, I figured everything out and got to the end of, of how, how I needed it to be. Um, I was responsible for the music and the drawing. Uh, it was a little bit challenge uh, to get the music for the, uh, for the, for the game and also the draw because we have nothing and we have to start something somewhere.
that was our presentation. I hope you all like it and uh, please download and just play the game. Thank you. On number nine, we have Plundery, a 2D RPG game full of features. Good work to Lucas, Anthony and Lurink. Let's see the game. Hello, today we're going to present you our game. Plundery is a 2D dungeon crawler. It's a single player game. Our story is that a crystal got stolen from your home village and you have to get it back in order for the witch to brew potions. The, and, for the and you need to get the crystal back from the dungeon. It got stolen by the goblins. The dungeon is filled with goblins, orcs, heal potions and chests. The chests randomly contain weapons and accessories. Now we will show you a little gameplay of the game. So here you can see he takes the weapons from a chest and you could, uh, can put them and take it. Now we will uh, attack goblins. And after he's done, he's going uh, down and he takes a potion to heal himself. And then he keeps going like that. So here you can see for art style, we chose pixel art. Um, here you can see the village. On the other side you can see the witch house, on the middle the blacksmith and on the right the entry for the dungeon. So here are the items we all have in the game and they all have different stats. Here's the chest and here's the heal potion. Uh, so here's our team. We have Anthony, he was uh, our main programmer and did some art. We have Lucas, he was our main artist and me, Lurins, uh, I did I did all the musics. Then our challenges we encountered uh, while making the game. Programming the inventory system and the sword mechanics were one of the challenges uh, while we made the game. And making good, fitting, original music was also a big challenge. Thanks for listening. I hope you will enjoy, enjoy our game. Number eight. It's... Back to the Pond, a very creative 2D game where you play a frog. Well done to Julie, Jasmine, Melina and Nicola. Okay, um, so hello, we're the developers of the game Back to the Pond. Um, I'm Melina and I worked on the art for the game. Uh, this is Julie, she worked on the sound and uh, music design for our game. And this is Nicola, he was our main programmer. Um, our um, our group also has a fourth member, but um, she couldn't be here today. But uh, to tell her, uh, tell you what she did, she worked on the dialogues for our game and also made this cool PowerPoint presentation that you see here. Um, to give you an idea what our game is about, we wanted to show you a bit of our intro. As you can see, there's this little frog that's called Pat. And uh, the game is all about how Pat gets um, lost after a big rainstorm. So he gets flushed away and in the end he um, ends up in the sewer and the game's purpose is all about helping Pat find his way back home. Um, the game is a story-driven puzzle game, so you, uh, solve, uh, you go through the game by solving puzzles and talking to the characters around you. Uh, there's an example of one of these puzzles where you have to arrange the, um, the pipes in such a manner that the water can get from A to B. Uh, it's, a, it's totally in 2D pixel art and all the art is self-made as well as the music. Though with the music we got some help from outside of our group of a friend of Julie who was so nice to let us use his music in our game. Um, it's as said a dialogue based game so there's a bunch of characters and here's some example of these characters. How they looked in concept art and how they finally look in game. Um, at this point, it's also an interesting thing to mention that 
at the very beginning we wanted to make a whole game look like this, like self-drawn in watercolor, but we realized very fast that this was just way too much work, so we just ended up using good old pixel art for the graphics. Um, here's some more concept art of our game, of the first level called the sewer, and the second level we initially planned to do called the road, but in the end we just ended up doing the sewer level because we kind of run, ran out of time, and there was also a situation we like to call Please don't ever forget to make backups of your game project. But well, stuff happened and the point is if we ever make the full game, we still have ideas for future levels and there's not just one level we have to keep. Finally, uh, here's a video showing a bit of our game. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay. How do I make it play? <laughs> okay, now it worked. Sorry. <laughs> it's just about uh, the main character walking a bit around and bit, a bit of showing off the world. So, yeah. On number seven, we have. Conqueria, a 3D ambitious strategy game. Great job to Felix, Felix again, Ryan and Brandon. Let's see the game. Imagine 500 years from now, the, the Earth gets hit by an asteroid called Exotron. 30 billion people die. The 6 billion remaining survivors start a race for the last remaining natural resources hidden deep inside the asteroid. Desperate for life, they form war alliances to be the first to occupy the resources. For the last two months, we've been working very hard to, uh, on developing Conqueria. It's a 3D multiplayer strategic 1v1 turn-based war game. We are passionate science fiction fans, which is why we chose this genre. And uh, the following video um, just, um, explains the base features of the game. Thank you, Felix. So what makes our game unique is that we have uh, various troops and different buildings, as well as uh, we designed the, the map terrain and uh, basically the game UI. So while keeping the, the objects relatively low poly, we managed to produce detailed and attractive art so that you can experience our game, game's stunning visuals. Besides that, we managed to produce, uh, we, we managed to create a diverse array of alliances and troops um, that you can choose from so that, um, so that you can um, set your playstyle and your, uh, well, so that you can set your playstyle and um, choose your aesthetic taste. Well, uh, other than that, um, yeah, let's. These are the art and designs. So we have uh, many art and designs, many troops, such as the mortar over here as well as um, the warship, for example, and also various buildings such as the airport. So I'm wondering who made all, uh, I'm, wondering, I'm, I'm sure you're wondering who made all of this. So uh, let's head to Felix who will introduce to you our team. Thank you, Brendan. Um, well, first of all, we start with the challenges and we, have, we had actually a lot of challenges like for coding the game, and also to come up with uh, a lot of troops ideas. But I think the biggest problem was uh, our time management to get everything set up. And uh, we learned actually a lot in Unity, Blender, and also C Sharp. And with the help of the coaches, we uh, managed to master quite everything. Uh, so our team, we had uh, Felix and Ryan, who were our developers and Brandon and myself were the designers and artists. And then, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope we encourage you to play our game. A six, we have Defender of Disaster, a 2D turn-based game where you can play against a computer or against a friend. Great technical achievement by Benjamin, Anton, and Olivier. 
So today we're going to present to you our game, Defenders of Disaster. Defenders of Disaster is a medieval style turn-based strategy, which you can play in a single player campaign against the game's AI or in multiplayer mode against your friends. The goal of the game is to defeat all enemy units. But how do you defeat your, uh, the enemy units? Well, in our game, you play as a general who has an army of units which you can command. You can tell them to move, to attack, and some can even cast magic, as you can see here on the screen. As I said before, you can play against an AI in our single player mode. Um, the movement of the AI and the player units are calculated with a dexterous algorithm, which calculates the shortest path between the units and the target position while avoiding all obstacles, as you can see on the screen. If you beat the campaign mode, you can also replay it in hard mode where the intelligence of the AI increases. Um, you may have already read in the general information slide that um, all our assets are self-made, which means that everything from sprites to music was made from scratch. This was possible because we had two very talented artists in our group which dedicated a lot of time in creating uh, those beautiful artworks. Here you can see uh, two example levels. On your uh, left side you can see uh, the first level of our campaign mode and on the right side you can see uh, one of two uh, playable maps in the multiplayer mode. We also made a little video just to demonstrate our game. And finally, when it comes to our team, I'm Benjamin Vogel, this is Anton Naves, and this is Olivier Huberti. Thank you for listening. On number five, we have, well, we already have our first winning game in the category of the best educational game. So, the prize for the best educational game goes to... Airliner! Congratulations Eva, Anna, Beatrice and Senna, you were in some really cool tech gears. Let's now discover the game. Um, hello, um, today we are going to present you our game, Airliner. It is a 3D, uh, 3D game and the concept is like an escape room. Um, we have to solve some riddles to get some clues, which will then lead to the end of the game, uh, where you have to decipher a code. And these riddles get, um, they get harder. So once you're done with the uh, riddles, Next to the uh, cockpit door in front of the cabin, you're going to find a keypad. We can type in your four number code. If it's the wrong one, you're going to have to try another one. If it's right, you win by opening the door and taking, taking over the plane yourself. There's a video on film. <laughs> So this is just a demonstration of what it what it looks like and where you can find the riddles. So we created the game with Unity and Pro Builder. Uh, the girls were responsible for the artistic aspe aspects and um, 
you know, uh, finding sounds and ideas and so forth, while I was the one who was uh, coding the game with Bolt. On number four, we have also a prize. It is for the best fun game. The game you are about to see has been made by two hardworking students and they managed to create a really high quality and complete game. And the best fun game goes to Facility 017. Congratulations to Eva and Anna, you did a really great job. Facility 017, a game about how, how a secret facility and their greedy authorities ruined the world. Humanity has made a great achievement. They have found a way to attain immortality. But as always, with such big discoveries, accidents are bound to happen. The game takes place half a year after such an accident happened at Facility 017. You play as its former head scientist suffering from amnesia. Your goal is to, your goal is to find diary pages and logbooks and unfold the secret past. Then here a clip. Uh, of me playing the first part of the game. Here you can see uh, the very first clue. And here you find the very first diary page. The game is full of complex uh, puzzles and fun mini games. As you could see already in the uh, in the gameplay. It has a unique setting, and you, have, you are free to move around freely as it's a noble world kind of game. And like, it's an exploration game where you can watch, uh, you have to watch everything and consider every little detail. Um, it's, as I already said, the setting is very, ca uh, very uh, unique, but it's especially the storyline which makes the game uh, catchy. Um, it has many nice puzzles and uh, you will find yourself itching to know more about uh, what happened with every new clue and puzzle you solve. Um, our team consists of two, Hannah and me. While Hannah did the coding and, fo and provided self-made 2D sprites, I um, focused on modeling and the 3D arts. So the coding, I coded some mini games, as you can see here on top, that you need to solve in order to open doors. And also on uh, below you can see the first diary page. Uh, well, I used mainly uh, 3DS Max and some assets from the asset store. But also, uh, yeah, as you can already see here, is for example the canteen, the office room, and the meeting room. Now, if you, um, now it's your job to find out about that dark past and like download the game and play it. Next up, we are entering the top three games. At this point, I guess you know that the surprise is that there are many, many more prizes than we initially announced. You just did too good of a job and we need just more rewards to cover more students. All right, the next best fun game award goes to Mind Maze. You also get some really cool tech gear. Luca, Nitya Priya, Nicola, you did an excellent job. Well done. Welcome to Mind Maze, the new 3D FPS shooter game. Following an alien invasion, the player takes on the role of a xenologist to save the human race from extinction by decoding the alien's mind, which consists of numerous levels. But before entering the mind maze, the player has to learn how to defend himself by either using a gun or a sword. 
So in order to get to the next level, you have to find the heart hidden in the labyrinth. So in the next level, we combine so a circular maze with rotating walls and sliding doors. To ad advance to the final level, the player has to collect the heart at the center of the maze. In the final level, the boss level, you have to face your worst enemy from the beginning of the maze. And in order to get to the boss, you have to pass multiple obstacles, such as electrocuting walls. But it's not as easy as it might seem. Imagine if the walls disappeared. But in fact, the walls didn't disappear really. They are just invisible. So you have to get through a maze with transparent walls. Finally, the player has to face the boss. Um, he has to defeat multiple enemies, which will get bigger and slower. But don't underestimate the bigger ones, as they deal much more damage to the player. But beware of your health bar in case it depletes. So, good luck. So, let's have a quick look at the minds behind the minds. Here we have Nicola, who was in charge of the level design and did programming in C Sharp. And here we have Nitya Priya, who also programmed in C Sharp and also made her very own level. And this is Luca, and she did the 3D art in Blender. So now we're asking you, are you ready to defend the human mankind and to decode the alien's mind? Thank you for listening. <laughs> All right, next up we have the biggest prize for this competition. We are talking the prize for the best team. This prize is given to the team that could tick every box. A high quality and complete game, great pitch and a great team. With that being said, the best team award goes to Hemlock Solves. Congratulations to Joanna, Ruby and Derry. You did an excellent job and you get a cash prize of 1,400 euros. Let's watch the pitch. Okay, so our game is called Hemlock Solves and we've called ourselves Bull Industries. Um, Hemlock Solves is about a character, Hemlock, who is an amateur detective and there is a murder in a Sun Dollars of a barista and the uh, hemlock is trying to find the murderer so from this you can probably conclude that it is a murder mystery genre and all of our characters are based off people in our lts group such as ralph marshall um so we'll be showing you our gameplay with a video so a hemlock can move everywhere and the characters um, also speak. So, just gonna, I don't know if you can hear it, but yeah. And um, so you have interactable objects as well, which uh, when you press like M, for example, it'll open up a mini game, which we'll talk about later as well. Um, so you have, that's the suspects button, which kind of gives you an overview of all the suspects. So you can make a more educated guess, have a menu, which is a regular menu really, and then a final accusation, which is where you can basically just accuse the person that you think did it and the game will tell you whether or not you're right or wrong. So for the art style, we chose to make it simplistic. Uh, the aesthetic is hand-drawn, but clean. Um, the common factor of all the things that are drawn is thick black lines and solid blocks of colour. Um, so the mini games, uh, we try to adapt them to the code as best as possible. They give you hints as to who the murderer is and um, they, these are some examples. We have a crossword. Um, a multiple choice task, a riddle, and a translation task. Okay. Um, and our challenges, so I was a developer and an artist, and my main issues were with Unity, crashing, and with the new programming language. Dara was the uh, sound artist, and he had some issues recording the um, well, sound with Odyssey, and Ruby had, was the main artist and had problems uh, with uh, cleanliness and uh, with splitting the drawings for animation 
so can, can you close the case yeah download the game now thank you and that's number two we still have one more game this means that we have actually two best teams this year so the next game receives the most votes from all the jury by far it's original fun and very very well executed it's a game that all wanted to play so the best team award goes to matter of perspective congratulations and excellent work to tiffany roy and bar Liu win a cash prize of 1400 euro as well let's discover the pitch now hello so today i'm going to present your game matter of perspective some general information it's a parkour jump and run game coded in c sharp you have five lives and you instantly respawn upon death. You have to switch between different perspectives to beat the levels and you have to evade enemies and traps. So a small video to illustrate this, right here you can see the main character is switching between different perspectives by pressing the X and Y keys. The yellow circles are coins, you can collect 10 of them to receive a 1-up and the green cube at the end of the level is the goal of the level and by when you reach the green cube it will be instantly brought to the next level. And our team consists of three people, Hoy, the project manager and programmer, Tiffany, story artist and writer of the introduction, and myself, also programmer and level designer. Then a video to show you the game. This is the main menu. Upon clicking on play on the right side, you'll see your high score, which gets updated every time you beat the game with a better score. You can go to a level select screen, and right here we went into the story mode. The story mode explains the background information of the game, the goal of the game, and why it is possible to switch between different perspectives. Once the story mode completes, after the screen, you will be presented with a screen showing you some general information and the controls necessary to beat the game. First level is quite simple, just jump over the mountain, you can collect the coins and then reach a green cube. Second level seems exactly the same, but you will actually fall through. And when you switch perspective, you'll notice that there's a hole and that there are spikes. You'll have to then only go over the mountain and reach the green cube by switching perspectives again. Then third level, you have to go around the wall, but this time you have to be careful. There's an enemy, which is the red cube with the exclamation mark. You have to jump over the enemy and then make it to the green cube by switching perspectives again. Then fourth level seems like it's a big wall, but it's actually two walls stacked behind each other. You have to venture through these walls by switching perspectives multiple times and then finally reaching the green cube at the end of the level. And then fifth wall seems like there's a big wall on the side, but it's actually a set of stairs. By switching perspective, you will have to climb up these stairs and then onto the blocks at the top. Now you have to be careful that there are numbers on the blocks and you have to select the right number. The, right, the numbers indicate how many units of depth there is. So the first block is five units in. You have to go into the fifth block. If you select the wrong number, you will fall down and have to try the level again. Second level, sef, second jump, you'll have to go into block number two and jump over. And upon reaching the green block, you win the game. And as you can see, winning our game is all just a matter of perspective. Thanks for your attention. Let's recap the 11 games. Styx, The Traveler, Plundery, Back to the Pond, Conqueria, Defender of Disaster, Airliner as best educational game, Facility 017 as best fun game, Mind Maze as best fun game as well, Hemlock Source as best team, and Meadow Perspective as best team. Now the Community Award. This prize has been 100% voted by students and students only. So the Community Award goes to Defender of Disaster. Great job again, your fellow colleagues just love your game. You win a special tech gift as well. But wait, there is more. We now have the real surprise. First, team 11 to 6, you don't go anywhere empty handed. You also get a special tech gift. Second, all 35 teams, this means everyone, will get extra support by industry experts and via workshops to polish and publish their game 
online on any platform that they would like. And with all this, it is now the end of the game dev module. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked uh, working in a team and building a game from absolute zero. There was a lot to learn, but uh, we can say proudly that we are really, really happy of all the results that we saw. Uh, it's really impressive the quality that you managed to do. The jury was also very impressed and uh, thanks to them for taking the time to, to test and play all your game and watch all your pitches. And uh, thanks to all the coaches as well that uh, got involved during this module to create also all the additional content and uh, so on. Congratulations again to all the teams. You did an excellent job and you created really fun games. And uh, that's it, right? Oh, like and subscribe if you like this video. See you later.